Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Dentistified. In this video, I'll talk about how the establishment of a proper plane of occlusion plays a key role in the fabrication of an aesthetically and functionally acceptable prosthesis. You know, the ultimate goal of prosthetic dentistry is the construction of a prosthesis which is in harmony with the patient's stomatognathic system, right? And this in turn is possible only if the construction of a prosthesis is based on sound biological as well as mechanical principles. So if you want to gain some knowledge about uh, overcoming this challenge of uh, determining correct occlusal plane for a successful prosthesis, then you must continue watching. So what do we mean by plane of occlusion? The term plane of occlusion refers to an imaginary surface or an average plane that theoretically touches the incisal edges of the incisors and the tips of the occluding surfaces of the posterior teeth as you can see in this picture. So together the curve of Spee, the curve of Wilson and the curve of uh, incisal edges are referred to as the curve of occlusion, right? Now why is the correct orientation of the occlusal plane so important? The correct orientation of uh, the occlusal plane has a significant role to play in achieving optimal aesthetics, optimal function and occlusal balance of the prosthesis. And these three things in turn contribute to a proper sense of balance in a dental composition, right? Whereas on the other hand, faulty orientation of the occlusal plane, either in fixed or uh, removable prosthesis, will affect the interaction between the tongue and buccinator muscle. And this will further result in uh, food accumulation in the sulcus and uh, cheek biting or tongue biting can also be seen and it can also result in a compromise with the aesthetics and the phonetics and uh, the faulty orientation of the occlusal plane can also result in uh, instability of the dentures and uh, even uh, tissue alteration can also be seen as a result of the faulty orientation of the occlusal plane and there would be untimely bone resorption. Now let me tell you what is a curve of speed. So it is the anterior posterior curvature of the occlusal surfaces. That means it is the curvature that goes from front to the back. As you can see in this picture, beginning at the tip of the lower canine, following the buccal tips of uh, the bicuspids and the molars and continuing towards the anterior border of the ramus. That means the curve of SPI begins at the tip of the lower canine, follows the buccal tips of uh, the posteriors and continues towards the uh, anterior border of the ramus, okay, as uh, you can see in this picture. Now let me tell you what is the importance of curve of SPI. Why is the curve of SPI so important? So first reason for uh, the curve of SPI being so important is that for maximum occlusal stability, the occlusal plane should be oriented such that it is perpendicular to the direction of uh, occlusal forces, right? So to ensure that uh, the biting forces are directed parallel with the long axis of the teeth, as you can see in this picture, the long axis of each lower tooth is aligned parallel with the arc of closure. And hence, the posterior most uh, tooth in the lower arc is aligned with a forward tilt. I hope you understand this point that why the posterior most tooth in uh, the lower arc tilt. It is because the long axis of uh, each tooth is aligned parallel with the arc of closure, right? And this tilt changes progressively as we move towards the anterior teeth and this progressive change in alignment creates what we call as curve of SPI. Hence this explains the second reason for uh, the curve of SPI being so important that the curve of SPI aligns each tooth for maximum resistance to functional loading. Okay. 
Now the next thing is that the curve of speed should be such that it should not hamper the function of uh, anterior guidance. Okay, and what is the function of anterior guidance? I hope that by now you already know that the function of anterior guidance is a posterior disc occlusion as I've already explained it in detail in my previous videos. I'll provide the link for those videos in the description box. So the posterior disc occlusion means that as the mandible is protruded, the anteriors come in contact and all the posteriors disc occlude as you can see in this picture. Okay. So a correct plane of occlusion allows the protrusion without posterior interference. That means there should be no posterior interference. There should be no interferences during lateral excursive movements and there should be no loss of function on the working side. Working side is the side towards which mandible is moved. So the next question which arises is that what will happen if uh, the curve of speed is too concave or if it's too high posteriorly. So if the curve of speed is too concave or if it is too high posteriorly, one or more posterior teeth may interfere in the protrusive movements. Okay, And this in turn will activate muscle incoordination and there will be overloading of uh, both teeth as well as joints. And this further would result in excessive wear of posterior teeth and hypermobility. Hence, just ensure that the curve of speed is not too high posteriorly. Okay. So, the next topic is uh, curve of Wilson. I'll talk about curve of Wilson and briefly about Monson's curve too and their clinical importance in uh, next video in uh, part 2 of this video which will be posted very soon on this channel. So, yeah. Thanks for watching uh, today's video and stay tuned for the part 2 and if you like this video do hit that like button and share this video with your friends and spread the knowledge make sure that you are subscribed to this channel dentistified if you haven't already and if you don't want to miss out any of my videos in future do press that bell icon which is next to the subscribe button so that you will get notified each time i upload a new video till then take care i'll see you soon in my next video